Having the TV cameras around hasn't really hampered the research. Uh, the important part of that is that they haven't been allowed into the MR suite itself. They haven't been allowed into the scanning suite. And so volunteers, uh, there's nothing that, that could make them self-conscious. There's nothing that could uh, make them aware that they're being filmed. So, and the uh, brain scanning element of the study is the, the main aspect of it. So the data that we're collecting from that aspect isn't being contaminated by having the, the cameras there so I think that's quite important. It was it has been um, different in, um, to to be conducting a study in this setting for us because of course you are a little bit more aware um, when the camera around especially just in the beginning but the camera cameras were positioned so that we they were not really interfering too much and very quickly you forgot about it and, and then we could just uh, do the study as we normally would be doing. And it did not affect the, the main uh, outcome, the meshes of the brain that we conducted because the cameras were not really present when, when that was done. Um, but it, it has been, been, been interesting to try that. We have experience in conducting these kind of brain emitting trials, um, giving psychoactive compounds and investigating their effects on the brain. So we have a, also a database of, of people that have been participating before and people that they know and recruit for. So a lot of it is word of mouth um, in, in these studies actually. Um, in this specific study, because it's a collaboration with a television um, company, it's a bit different um, also from an ethical point of view because the volunteers have to really consider very thoroughly if they want to be filmed taking um, a substance like this, a class A substance, and because it will be um, possible to, to see that um, footage probably forever on the internet. Um, so we are uh, very, very kind of thorough in our way of um, assessing the volunteers in this specific study f for that extra reason, um, both in writing and when we take the actual consent for this study. So this study was a placebo-controlled study. Um, the volunteers received vitamin C placebo um, capsulated uh, on one occasion and then pure MDMA on the other occasion. So we were thinking that it may actually be quite obvious when the volunteers get placebo and when they get MDMA and so we were actually quite pleasantly surprised really that that blinding element that, that refers to the fact that we're blind to the fact that the volunteers are going to get placebo one day or MDMA. We don't know on which occasion they're going to get the drug and when they're going to get the placebo, and neither do they. So that's referred to as double blind. And we were actually expecting, like I said, that um, it might be quite obvious when they have the drug and when they have placebo, but we were quite pleasantly surprised to find that um, some volunteers who'd had the placebo actually started imagining that they'd had the drug. And similarly, when the volunteers had had MDMA, sometimes because the scanner environment was so strange, there's very little sensory stimulation, they weren't sure that they'd had the drug. So it was only until they got out of the scanner and they looked around them and they felt a little bit woozy on their feet and such like that they realised that they had actually been given the drug. So the ethical process gaining the um, appropriate regulatory approvals for the study is quite extensive for any study. Um, perhaps with this study there's been a little bit more scrutiny uh, given the controversial nature of it, that it's going to be filmed and such like. Um, but we really had to defend that, we had to explain why it's being filmed, that this isn't going to interfere with the, the science. Um, 
that we'll be able to see uh, how it influences uh, the data to some extent. Um, and also we argued about the science communication element that we're really providing a unique opportunity for people to see science as it really happens um, and people haven't really had that kind of opportunity before. So the ethical process involves submission of an um, application to a NHS uh, research ethics committee. They scrutinise all the material uh, in a lot of detail they get back to us via, um, via um, email and then we have a meeting and we have a thorough discussion about all of the elements of the study. So it really does receive a lot of scrutiny from the uh, Research Ethics Committee. It also goes to another body which is involved in um, sort of institutional uh, research, another level of assessment of the safety and the ethics of the study and uh, so it, th there is those two sort of filters if you want if it doesn't get through you know uh, if it gets through one it, it might be stopped at the other so it's quite a quite a thorough going over which takes quite a lot of time it can be quite frustrating at times but you do have the reassurance that your study is being properly scrutinized and they're looking at every every element of it <laughs>